Welcome to Online Offscript, where we discuss trending marketing topics and all things new on the internet. I'm Sam Olmsted, Online Optimism's New Orleans Managing Director. And I'm Mira McNitt, the Social Media Director. This week, we're talking about social media, how businesses can utilize platforms like TikTok and the misconceptions of social media platforms. Our guest today is Hellas Missouri, Senior Brand Writer for Sprout Social. Hellas has eight years of experience in brand copywriting and content development, having worked for startups and Fortune 500s. Thanks for joining us, Hellas. How are you? I'm good. I'm really good. Happy to be here. Great. Well, super excited to be talking to you about TikTok today. Um, It is one of my favorite topics. Um, So I think the best question to ask off the bat about TikTok is, why has it been such a digital disruptor and like what makes it stand out as a social platform? Yeah, I think, um, so I think what's really cool about TikTok and like what made it stand out in the beginning of it becoming, because it had been around for a while, but it sort of started to become more of like a mainstream for everyone app, probably like end of 2020, early or end of 2019, early 2020. Yeah. And I think what made it stand out in that time was it kind of the way that it democratized how people were like stumbling upon and discovering new content and like different creators and people. And, you know, you didn't already have to have this huge following or like tons of engagement to end up on someone's for you page. So that kind of endless scroll was way more diversified and way more interesting um, because of that. And I think that that stood out to people and maybe felt not just more compelling to watch, but more engaging to also jump in and try to be a part of. Um, So I think that is initially what makes TikTok TikTok stand out for sure. Yeah, I think it's an easier barrier to entry to like try to become an influencer on TikTok. Like you don't have to do as much like work and like social networking as you do as the other platforms. You really truly can just like put whatever you're feeling out there and there is a, a big chance that it could just, you know, take off. The amount of times that I've seen someone post something with like no hashtags, no caption, and it like blows up and then they're in the comments, they're like, oh no, I didn't think anyone would see this. (laughs) It feels like that's almost every single viral video. (laughs) There's always like a response follow up like that. All of mine that have gone viral. It's so, I'm like, nope, this is, this is the one that I put the least amount of effort in. And I just wanted to make a joke for my friends to see. And now the whole world knows. So what I think is so interesting about it is the For You page allows you to connect with people about topics that you thought you were really alone in feeling or expressing. And all of a sudden, there are hundreds of thousands of people who have the same exact thought about the same exact book or movie or whatever it is. And that is really what got me hooked on it. Um, and now, yeah, I'm yes. addicted to it. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's addicting to come across things that are so like niche relatable. Like you I think I feel like a common comment I always see is somebody saying in the comments like, "Oh, I've never had an original thought, have I?" <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. everything on your for you page is so hyper specific. It's like borderline terrifying, but you love it at the same time. So I yeah, I feel like the addiction is like the the way that you just you've never felt so relatable. (laughs) So speaking of that, what's a common misconception uh, about TikTok that you think is hindering companies from using it or getting in the way of it becoming more, um, you know, widespread even than it is now? I think, I think that there's maybe like a hesitance from maybe like brands and advertisers to, um, experiment sometimes. And TikTok is the type of platform that like really calls for trying new things, experimenting in different ways. And I, I feel like a lot of brands hesitate to hop on that train. And sometimes that's really smart because not every platform is going to be for you. Um, but sometimes that's also, uh, it really like holds you back uh, because you, you know, you're not able to you know, think of different ways to connect with people and your customers because you're you're hesitant to even like try a platform like this. But yeah, I think overall the platform calls for experimentation and some advertisers don't know how to jump out of like what they already know or like maybe like a 
a more specific view of what they view uh, reaching out to their customers is and engaging with their customers. But if they tried it, I, I think that this platform is the perfect place to do that. Do you think, uh, picking up on that, do you think that brands are stuck in the mindset of what they think TikTok was or used to be? And is that a block as well? Definitely. Yeah. I think that, you know, everybody tends to think of it as like a dancing app and there's a lot of dancing, but I feel like, you know, once you, your algorithm starts to kind of like learn more of your content, like the people who aren't just, there are people who aren't just seeing dancing vids. There are people who will definitely see different types of videos. And um, there's so many niche pockets of the app, like so many, you know, different like communities to tap into. Yeah. And um, I think that, yeah, sometimes brands tend to maybe forget that it is so multifaceted. I don't think I have seen like a trending dance on my For You page since summer 2020 with the Renegade. Months, months for me as well. And <laughs> if, if a brand saw my TikTok For You page, they'd say, why did they make an app that has frogs all the time. Like, what is this? Who is this guy? So I think, yeah, the For You page, the algorithm, it, it's so attentive to what you like that um, you can get past dancing really quickly once you start using it. Really quickly, yeah. Well, perfect. Um, so what kind of companies would you recommend to use TikTok for ads? So who who do you think it does fit with? You, you'd mentioned that it's not for everyone, um, but what brands do you think work best for it? Yeah. So, um, well, yeah, like I said, I definitely don't think that it's for everyone, but I think that everyone should at least try it and like try to experiment there. I do think that, I think that brands with um, like products, uh, particularly like something tangible where somebody wants to see how it's made. So I think like small businesses in particular are really great on TikTok because they can really show like the process of something being made. I think that totally applies to larger businesses as well. Uh, but I think there's something really compelling about seeing something start to finish. And, you know, on one hand, there's like that transparency, that business transparency that's so like, you know, engaging builds trust. But then there's something really compelling about being a viewer who's like learning more just through watching your content and learning more about maybe a specific type of industry. So I think that any type of business with a product where you can kind of show like a tangible product where you can show something start to finish is really interesting for people. Um, I also think there are some, I think there are some industries that have fun on TikTok that are like maybe unorthodox. <laughs> um, Airlines. I think airlines. Yes. Okay. So I, okay. I feel like uh, industries that have uh, maybe a reputation for being like stuffier have huge success on TikTok. Like you can look at like airlines, um, the medical, like medical professionals, lawyers, teachers. Uh, my favorite is bookstores. I love yeah. seeing uh, bookstores on TikTok. I think that they have some of the best like the most interesting content <laughs> like book talk is so huge but they not only tap into book talk they also just have like their own interesting content in different bookstores everywhere it's so fun to see how um, libraries and bookstores make content on tiktok i think one of the ways that bookstores does it really well is they're not approaching it as like hey i'm a bookseller wanting to sell you a book they're like we're readers we're readers yeah. and here's how we yeah. feel about books and i think that yeah. TikTok allows businesses to have that really personal angle and like brands. Exactly. It doesn't have to be about like selling all the time. It doesn't have to feel like a transaction. It really is, you know, like TikTok's like culture is so um, non-curated that um, it's, it just lends itself really well to uh, like a, a business or any type of like small business, big business being really personal and intimate and connecting with the people through the screen. So, you know, that kind of leads into an issue of like the TikToks are like run by a person, you know, like you have to have someone like who's the face of your brand as your TikTok. But at the same time, it's still like this faceless brand. And there's been like a lot of like consumer um, distrust when it comes to like, oh, it's just the brand manager. It's 
It's like, you know, I told my boss, right. I want this. They'll give me a raise if I get a million likes on this. People are like, oh, do it for the brand manager. And there's just this like <laughs> weird, like kind of dystopian like relationship now to like the brand yeah. because of like TikTok and Twitter. So can you, do you, can you elaborate on like how the brand voice has changed because of those two platforms? Definitely. Um, this is something that we talk about often too, like um, even – you know, as a copywriter, and we're constantly, you know, working on brand voice and how we evolve that throughout the years and everything and throughout different changes on social. Um, what's really interesting is that I think social has fueled this, uh, like a specific type of, of brand voice now, um, where we've sort of, uh, I, we're definitely more in like the individual social media manager as the voice of brands um, on not just TikTok, but just like social media period. So it's, you know, people, consumers are super savvy now. We have a lot of insight and we can, we know that there is a single person behind an account, just like you were saying. So with that knowledge, it's, it's a lot more engaging to just like tear that wall down and talk directly to that person and know that that is the voice that's being you know, a message to you and across different platforms. So I think that, you know, when you see uh, brands like Duolingo, who they have like a great, they have like obviously a great social presence, you know, everybody is talking about how well they're doing TikTok and other platforms, but that social media manager is also like people know who she is and um, she makes her own content and it's all very like, uh, people are aware of the individual now. And I think that individual voice is now brand voices on social. I think it's kind of interesting because a lot of people say they like, they want to be Duolingo TikTok. They want to be Wendy's Twitter. And it's like, well, that's a person. Yeah. And that's a very funny person. And you don't just get to yeah. like wake up and be them. That's exactly. their personality. Like, exactly. Like that's the, the, the secret to it is that it's not as contrived as you think. Like it's not as much of like a complex strategy as, you know, a business would treat it. It really is just they're, you know, higher talented, talented people who, you know, understand how to connect with others and they will take your brand voice bar. And you have to live and breathe TikTok and the internet to understand all the references and to create the videos and to create the style that brands are looking for. I think one of the big issues is you have these brands that have one person as that voice, but then they need approval from seven different people in order to post yeah. a TikTok. And you cannot expand your presence, especially with the number of TikToks that you need to create to make an impact um, with that level of approval, I think. Yeah, I think like, yeah, I think that like um, insane levels of bureaucracy can hinder creativity and like reach for sure. Um, but yeah, I, I do think that there are some great examples out there of how people have been able to be successful and in a way that doesn't, you know, is not a bad light on the brand, doesn't harm the brand. And I hope that those examples, those, some of those shining examples kind of set a standard for other brands. So it's not just, you know, um, this like scary thing to experiment with, but, a but like a, a real standard to live up to. Yeah. It's kind of a bummer. I feel like a lot of brands want to have like a really polished social presence and it's like, but that's not social. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. the whole point of social media is, is people. So your brand should like engage like a person. Exactly. And that's especially not like TikTok. Like that is to be polished yeah. and hyper curated. Like the whole culture of the platform is really like a response to how, you know, we started to become like a very curated culture um, on social. And this is just sort of like a new era of moving away from that a little bit. And we're seeing it across platforms for sure. But I think that TikTok has been driving it a little bit. Yeah. I don't have time to explain to someone in the C-suite why I need to comment five tomatoes on this person's TikTok. I just need to comment right now. It's just important. trust me. You have to comment. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, you know, a lot of businesses are thinking now, should we be on TikTok? But, you know, there's also Reels and now there's YouTube Shorts. So how should businesses know which place is the right one for them? Yeah, I think it's hard to know if you don't without trying. So I, I do think that trying 
a new platform is always going to be worth it. You know, even in the end, if you feel like this is not the place that you are, you know, every business knows their audience best, right? So in yeah. after trying something, if you decide that like a specific platform is is not where you're reaching your audience, is not where you're, you know, connecting with new people or, you know, doing something meaningful, then you can feel free to move on from that platform. But at least trying and not just doing what you do on one platform and copy and pasting that onto other platforms, but really like giving the culture of the platform a shot is always going to work to your benefit as a business, as a brand, because you will always learn something from that experience, you know, regardless of how it goes. And you will always be able to apply those learnings to, you know, new things that pop up because social moves so fast that it's, you really, everything that we have done in the past will inform our future on different platforms. So I, I don't think that there is a great way to know which platform to uh, like devote more time and resources to. I just think that it is super important to for businesses to um, try and, you know, jump into a few different things. How long do you think they should be willing to give it a shot for? Because, you know, like on TikTok, you can post a yeah. hundred videos before you get that one. And True. Like, <laughs> and you have to post a hundred videos. Yeah. Honestly, you have to keep posting. <laughs> it's really the the key. Truly, that is a little bit of the secret. I, I, it's hard to say that there is like a, a a duration of time that anybody should specifically be um, trying things for, but I will say longer than you think, probably. Um, so I would say, I give it a few months, give it a quarter, you know, um, you know, see a quarter at minimum. Give it a couple quarters, maybe, <laughs> but one quarter at minimum. <laughs> to at least test for a few months how you can, how something is working. Are there any metrics that you're seeing that it indicate that your TikToks are doing well? Like I, I know that on a lot of platforms we look at, you know, likes, comments, stuff, um, like yeah. tic, or Instagram. Instagram is always saying saves. Saves mean a lot, saves and shares. But on yeah. TikTok, I find that my videos, they get a lot of saves and shares, but if the likes and the comments aren't really there, then it's it stops showing. Yeah, I don't think there's any like specific metrics to look at. I, I really do think that like all types of engagement matter on a platform like this because it is so just kind of like raw and real. Um, I, I think that just like having clear goals up front on your end, like as a brand is you know, like you, you know, the way that your audience engages with you and, you know, like, you know, when you meet a new audience, how they engage with you. So how, you know, what those like success metrics look like and you create those success metrics, um, you know, going into new situations based on, you know, your past. Yeah. I feel like, I know that I asked the question, but I feel like a lot of brands probably need to look at correlation to when they started using TikTok as opposed to direct results. You know, when I use Duolingo, not when I see a video, when I'm watching a random TikTok, I open it, something absolutely unhinged is in the comments. And I'm like, oh, I need to go practice my Spanish today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. And that's a great example of how like brand voice kind of carries over into those, those areas. And those are harder, those are harder to kind of find metrics on, or those are harder to kind of, um, like pull data from because it is so like widespread, you know, if somebody sees a comment and thinks of your brand. Uh, but I do think that like social listening is like a great piece there too. You can kind of like keep track of conversations happening um, about your brand in different places. So there could be, I think that your point about correlation is definitely a yeah. factor. In can that. I go off script for a second and ask a, a personal question if you don't mind? Oh my God, online off script? I'm going online off script here. <laughs> Um, but what, what does your for you right. page look like? What do you, what do you scroll through? What do you see? Um, it's so, <laughs> it's so chaotic. Um, this is like so, asking to see someone's diet. Yeah, I'm what? sorry. This might be. This is so personal. <laughs> it's so, it's so personal, <laughs> yeah. right? <laughs> I, I feel like right now it is okay. heavy mm. book talk. Like I am, I'm not just on book talk, but I'm on like book talk criticism. Ooh. Like it is, there's just like. 
I've got my my book talk videos and then I've got my videos of people criticizing book talk and I I I feel both opinions. I'm in both areas. So that's kind of my my for you page is like <laughs> conflicting right now. Um uh, what else? There are I'm getting like some I'm I'm a little in crystal Ooh. TikTok right now. So I've definitely been getting like um like small businesses who sell crystals and they're they do like packing videos of like packaging the, the crystals packing up ASMR. and showing off the crystal. I'm just It's so good. It's some of it is ASMR and I've never been an ASMR content person, but these crystal videos are so soothing. So I am kind of, I'm definitely getting some of that on my page. Well, thanks for sharing. I know, I know that is kind of personal, honestly. <laughs> what is, wait, what about you? What, what's your For You page oh, looking man. like uh, So right I already now? hinted a little bit, but my For You page right now, I'm a huge dog person. Oh, so dog, dog and then frogs. I'm getting a lot of frogs in some sort of miniature yep. business setting, I think. Um, I'm seeing, <laughs> seeing a lot of that. Um, and then um, I'm getting a lot of travel stuff. I'm getting a lot of Iceland and Switzerland videos that are just sort of these huge panoramic views. And so I think I need to go to Switzerland with my dog and find some frogs. Can I give my For You page hot tip? Yeah. I so. Oh, did you have something, Hellas? No, I just said I agree. I think so. I That's think what I need to do. Need yeah. to do. <laughs> so I run a book. Yeah. I'm a book talker. <laughs> I have an account dedicated to book talk. Um, but I also have my personal TikTok. And I think that all people running a like professional page, be that for themselves as an influencer or as a business, you got to have two accounts. You got to have the account that you're growing and you only engage within that community. But in your personal account, that is where you find memes. I find memes and trends on my personal yeah. account, never on book talk. People are like, oh, I've not seen this one before. I'm like, yeah, because you're only looking at book talk. And you'll point. find so much more if you look on another that's a good, page. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's especially true yeah, for professional accounts. <laughs> yeah, like if you're only – if you're promoting a product, like a beauty product, so you're only in like beauty spaces, you need to go out of there. Yeah, you're going to get the same thing over and over and over again. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Be like an echo chamber. <laughs> well, <laughs> yep. Like, yeah. Oh, echo chamber. So bad on TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Totally. That wraps up all of our questions. Um, thank you so much, Ellis, for joining us. That was great um, and really appreciate that. Loved talking TikTok with you. Um, if people wanted to find you on Sp or Sprout on social media, where would they go? Yeah, so um, definitely you can find Sprout on Instagram. We do some really cool content there. We have some really great team members who are whose faces you'll find on Instagram. So follow at Sprout Social um, on Instagram and follow us on Twitter. Um, and TikTok, actually. Uh, we're on TikTok. We're creating videos. Olivia, our social media manager, is there. So follow us on TikTok. Thanks for joining us today. Be sure to subscribe and rate the podcast. And if there's anything you'd like to hear us discuss, reach out on Instagram, Facebook, or LinkedIn. And as always, stay optimistic.